Hey all, it's Ryan the Tone Geek here, and today I'm going to go with you and walk you through, kind of like Bob Ross giving everyone their own paintbrush and canvas, but in this case I don't have a squirrel in my pocket, and I'm going to give you a digital file for the next series, and this series is how to design and fabricate or outsource, whatever you're going to do, your own steel string singer, your own double dumble style amp. Um, I'm going to make all the files available to you on my GitHub, so I'm going to pull that up here. Um, and then on my GitHub is like literally every single file. So you can either hear, be here, walk through along with these videos. You know, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks along the way. Um, and here's the videos, you know, here's the files right there for you. Or you can just literally send these files as is to a fabricator and have you know, one produced for you, that sort of thing. So that's cool. Um, why I'm doing this is I'm in the middle of designing Steel String Singer number two from all the information that I know about that amp, uh, at least, the, you know, the outside. I'm working on learning about the inside. Um, I'm selling some things so I can come up with the upfront cost to produce a few of these chassis to, to sell and recoup my investment. Um, I'm looking for if you're an angel investor and you want to help me out, that's cool too. Um, but I, I'm going to go the traditional route and try to be as self-sufficient as possible. The same thing that I did with my Steel String Stringer number four is I sold, I built a bunch of pedals and I sold them, um, and that gave me the upfront cost to produce the two chassis that I had made. Um, and then you know you could see through the YouTube channel that's just kind of all the things I did to get there. Um, for this, I'm, you're going to need three pieces of software. Uh, one is going to be AutoCAD, the 2D version, that's fine. Um, the second is Autodesk Inventor, that's where we're going to do our sheet metal fabrication. And then the third is going to be Inkscape. Inkscape is a free open source um, graphic design application, which is really cool. Um, so that's not going to cost you anything. If you're a student, you can have Every single piece of that software, the Autodesk um, Inventor, AutoCAD for free. If you're an alumni of a school and have access to a .edu mailing address, you I hear rumors that you can also sign up and, and get the educational discount of free for Inventor, um, Autodesk 360, I think is the other thing. Um, but yeah, so those are the applications that I use. The workflow is going to be use Autodesk or AutoCAD 2D first. We're going to get our layout of our amp, sort of where all the tubes are going to go. Um, make sure that the tubes don't are not in the way of um, things such as the power switches or the fuses. That was the word I was looking for that whole time. Um, so all those sorts of things. But definitely check out my github first and all the instructions are going to be there basically i'm going to be designing this ahead of my youtube videos so that way i'm coming in a little bit more educated on the video side and be a little bit smoother so let's just dive in oh by the way this is gonna be like a three-part series so i'm not going to do everything all in this video but stay tuned and subscribed so you get alerts about the next ones so first thing we're going to do is go to Autodesk AutoCAD. I believe that's by Autodesk. And then here is where we are going to do the layout of Steel String Singer number two. Now I am going to redesign this slightly. So what you see here is going to be perfect for you to learn from. Or if you want the tube layout exactly like you see it here, all in a row, kind of like what Two Rock does, then that's fine too. Um, some tips and tricks with AutoCAD, if you've never used it before, is that there's snaps down here that kind of align your pointer to a grid, the, the background grid. Um, this chassis, if you go back to my GitHub, is 23 and 3 quarters by 2 and a half by 8 and uh, 8.05 inches. It's kind of weird, but I have intel that that's the exact diameter or dimensions of steel string singer number two. Um, so back to our layout. 
So we're gonna see here that there's these two floating blocks and that's gonna be our front panel and that's gonna be our bottom panel or back panel for this design. Here is the hole for the power outlet. Um, I believe it's an Amphenol power outlet three prong. And here's where the switchcraft position is. And if you look closely, so I'm gonna select everything, and do an M for move. And I'm gonna snap to that corner, hopefully. And move it up. Now we get a better idea of where everything is gonna fall in line. So we have uh, the, ooh, I'm just gonna drop it here. So here's the power. The power should go directly between these two power tubes. And um, just so, because these can sit in pretty deep and you don't want that in the way. This power receptacle is centered between those power tubes. And one big thing to remember is that the, um, the fuse is very long. So you wanna make sure that that fuse is in a place that's not going to be obstructed. So right between power tubes is the best place for that to be. Um, the back panel is slightly different than steel strength signal number two because I give, instead of signal access, here is a whole signal loop that you can go you know, from preamp to power amp sort of thing. Um, and then also, instead of just being two four ohm taps, or is it two eight ohm taps to four ohm, I don't know. But anyway, so I have the selection of three different taps here. So in theory, you could do four, eight, 16 ohm, and then you can just be on your way. Um, a lot of this layout on the bottom here is left over from my steel strength singer number four. Um, basically all the power transformers are uh, fender style, the, the whole layout. So that's three, I believe three and a quarter or three and three quarters by three inch. Actually, we can do measure. So let's measure geom. And hopefully it snaps on that guy. I always forget which one down here is what. Object snap. Maybe that's it. Hello? Nope. Measure? Oh, maybe it's asking me D for distance. All right, so let's measure the distance from there to here. And it looks like it's 3.75. So we'll go from there to here, it's three inches. So I'm looking at the bottom corner, on the bottom, bottom, it says three. Very cool. All right, so that's just one way to, to measure the distance there. Um, you know, there's other holes. So here's the RCAs. Uh, I use Switchcraft. So basically another thing you can do is if you wanna double check any of these cutouts or start designing your own cutout per your own transformer requirements, you basically have to find the data sheet for your um, transformer for your tubes, whatever you gotta do there. Uh, all the measurements can be converted. So for example, this Belton um, said here, uh, basically it gives you a range for the cutouts. And when you go to the product measurements, do, do, do. Oh, here we go. The drawing, it's in millimeters. So I had to convert the millimeters over. And that's how I learned the diameter of the octal power tubes. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to go through every single thing here, but be, you know how to design and how to use AutoCAD because I think that other folks do a way better job than I do at teaching AutoCAD. Um, these on the outside, you might be like, well, what the heck are those? These are where our chassis is gonna mount to your cabinet. So these are gonna be top, the screws are gonna come in from the top and drive straight through the chassis or, you know, and then hold up. So you're gonna have a screw on the bottom tighten up the chassis and you're going to lift the whole chassis up against the what should be shielded aluminum at the very top. Um, trying to think what else we have here. Uh, this design uh, accommodates for both 50 watt output transformers as well as 100 watt output transformers. So that's what that is. Um, here's for a universal fit 
for uh, chokes, your you know massive inductors. Um, yeah, so for seal string singer number two, they have these switch craft slide switches. So that's where the, I'm gonna say put them. Uh, all the basically the the spacing at this point is what I think pretty close to the real steel string singer number two. Um, I have seen some artwork that suggests that these everything's kind of over slightly. So the design is still a little bit work in progress, depending on how far you know you know what I want to get out of this chassis. Um, either it's a one for one visual like I did with 004, or I want to you know st uh, stray just slightly for a better layout. I'm not sure, but here again we're only talking maybe a, an entire half inch, maybe a quarter inch, to make the difference of whatever it is that I think is going on here. Um, but yeah, so basically here's the layout and here's my approach for right now. Ever since I started to look more and more at Steel String Singer number two, the guts, I'm considering going with a scattered tube layout. So that's gonna be a little bit more involved and I think a little bit out of scope of this project. But um, I think this will be a good starter for most of you through AutoCAD learning the chassis layout. So where you could find this file is if you go into my uh, GitHub under AutoCAD design, we have the chassis layout. Don't open the back, That's um, I should have filtered that out. But for here we wanna do the, I believe the DXF. Either will work for you, um, but I believe the DXF is where was what we want. Uh, oh, sorry, DWG. The DXF is the wireframe of sorts, the, the vector style drawing. So go ahead, um, download that file, play with this layout, and the next time you see a video pop up for me, it's likely going to be step two, which is dun, 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 how to build this in 3D. So how to do the cuts how to do the flanges, how to do all that sort of stuff. Oh, and by the way, here's the sides. So I, I don't have the holes in yet, but I'm gonna teach you how to add the holes. So all that sort of stuff is coming. Um, let's see the front, let's get the front. I think actually what I did was accidentally reverse the front and the back. But yeah, so I've already added some of the artwork for fun, just for the alignment. But yeah, this is, this is coming, this is very exciting. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try to produce at least five of these chassis, have them outsourced to be built, the same companies that I use for number four. Uh, I trust them, They're, you know, everyone I dealt with was very professional, very accommodating, especially for a small guy like me. Um, not physically, but you know, not a company, or I'm not, you know, this is not my day job, this is, actually way far away from my day job as far as uh, skills and things like that. So this is completely something I've learned out of necessity to fulfill the sort of a drive that I had to build my own amplifier in a way that visually, you know, strikes me. And it's really, just really freaking cool, right? Like who else has what I built and no one. And I think that's a cool accomplishment. Um, and I want to help others get reach their goals as well. So enough of me talking, I'm gonna do some editing in this video and um, maybe even start with the second part here. So enjoy, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe, thanks.